It's all right, nothing wrong with your speakers. I just wasn't talking. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. So Outlander have finally given me the keys to their Instagram account and with it access to 1.3 million people. Was that responsible of them or was it a big mistake? I think it was a great idea. I could have caused untold destruction. But I'm being very well behaved today. So I said I wouldn't do too much damage. How are you all? How many have we here? Thousands, thousands of people. Um, I hope you're all doing well. I hope you're all enjoying your weekend, wherever you all are in the world. I'm seeing lots of flags, Canada, Brazil. It's good to see you. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for tuning in to, to tonight's episode of Not Very Much Q&A with Richard Rankin. Um, so, uh, presumably, most of you are Outlander fans. So, penultimate episode tonight. For those of you who haven't watched it already on uh, the Stars app on the, the uh, Outlander at Midnight last night. For those of you who have watched the episode, I won't be giving away any spoilers to those of you who haven't. But for those of you who have, I hope you enjoyed it. And for everyone else who will be watching tonight and tomorrow night, um, it's a really great episode that was written by our wonderful author, Diana. And I think you'll really like it. Actually, tonight's episode and uh, the finale next week is, is uh, a really, really, really gripping episode, especially next weekend. It's, it's a lot. I think you'll love it. I think you'll really love it. Um, season five. Season five's been a great season, huh? Um, we've had a lot of um, we've had a lot of amazing feedback about season five. We've had, uh, you know. We have such a very passionate fan base anyway, but the feedback uh, that we've been getting has been great and um, it's great that it's been something to keep people occupied during this time in particular as well. So thank you all for watching. Thank you all for your very kind words um, and thank you all very, very, very much for your continued support. But we're not here to listen to me. Um, praise you all. We're here to do a Q&A. Uh, let's see, how do we do this? I haven't done this. Um, so let's begin. I've got this little question panel. Okay, so, um, well, yeah, let's just fire straight in with the questions then, shall we? And then we can maybe have a little bit of a chat, see how we get on. Okay, question number one. Uh, <laughs> what? Well, you say, what the devil? What the devil? Why? Why is that? Why do you want me to say that? Is that a Roger line? Probably is. I should probably know better. Where did Roger, Brianna and Jemmy end up after they went through the stones? I don't know what you mean. That's potentially a spoiler in there, I think. So I'm going to leave that question for now. Um, when does season six filming begin? Um, well, I think everything's a bit up in the air at the moment, isn't it? So I can't actually officially, I can't give you any sort of official answer or even any sort of accurate speculation about when filming for season six might begin. Um, but we're all very much looking forward to it. Um, I can't wait to get started on season six. Uh, I know, I have heard that they are, you know, they're working away, the writers are certainly working away and we're basically, I think, just waiting for the all clear to, to get things in motion again. But you know, it's a very difficult time and these things have to be handled with care and they have, to, you know, preca certain precautions have to be taken and um, put in place in order to get such, such uh, sort of a big uh, logistical thing such as uh, production up and running again. Um, so soon, I hope. Um, but that's really all I've got for you uh, at the moment. Uh, let's see, who is your favourite character? My favourite character in Outlander? That's a tricky question. Um, I love them all and for different reasons. Um, but I'm always drawn to the bad guys, I think. I really, really loved Black Jack Randall. I thought he was great. I thought Tobias absolutely nailed that. I really, really love uh, uh, Ed Spillers. Well, I, mean, I love Ed Spillers. <laughs> But um, I really loved his uh, Stephen Bonnet. I thought he played that wonderfully. I thought he brought that right off the page. Um, so yeah, the the the, the more sinister, uh, the more sinister characters. I think I'm often drawn to just for I don't know my own 
morbid enjoyment. I don't know why. Um, but yeah, I love all the characters. I think all the characters are really well written. I think they're all very richly drawn up uh, by Diana. Um, and they're kind of what make the show, the diversity of amazing characters on the show. What else have we? Uh, what was your favourite scene to film, as that say? What was your favourite scene to film? Um, that's a good question. Uh, I've had a lot of really, really amazing scenes. Um, that I've enjoyed very much. Uh, one of the one of the one of the most eerie scenes that we filmed um, was a scene that was uh, we actually had to come back and reshoot because the first night that we tried to shoot it, the weather was absolutely horrific. Um, the wind was so bad that it was blowing all the lightning uh, lighting equipment about. Um, the crew were having a really hard time setting anything up or getting anything done. And it was when we were filming one of the last scenes of episode 213, so the finale of season two, um, up at the Stones, um, the night that Galus goes through the Stones. The weather was, it was horrible, it was treacherous. So we didn't film that night. Um, actually, we were sent home. Katrina, Sophie and I were wrapped at around three or four in the morning, having had done nothing the entire night. Um, which is fine because that you know that you know that, that that'll happen in, in cases where you know people are actually in, in, in danger, so they have to they have to kind of call it a night. Um, but we came back uh, quite a bit after that, and it was such an eerie, calm, quiet night on set. Not there wasn't a whisper in the air, not a blade of grass moved. There were kind of deer galloping. Did they gallop? Did deer gallop? Trolloping. <laughs> there were like a little herd of deer kind of running by in the background. There was a full moon that night and it felt like we were shooting that in a studio. There was just such a very still quietness to it that you don't experience very often at that time of year in Scotland. Um, so that was, that was a very interesting scene to pick up and shoot. I'll always remember that. Because it felt quite magical, it felt quite mystical and magical, and it felt very right for that scene as well, or for you, you know, for the scene surrounding the stones. Anyway, um, it was good. So that that that's a scene that oh, that'll you know that sticks in my memory quite a bit. Okay, question: <laughs> Are you married? No, I'm not married. Is that a proposal? How many seasons will there be? Um, I don't. I mean, we don't. I suppose as long as the show continues to be successful and as long as the actors continue to want to do it. Again, a lot of variables in there. Um, we're loving being part of the show. I'm certainly loving being part of the show. Um, the fans seem to be loving it just as much as the other were and we're, you know, constantly um, generating new fans, generating new fans. It sounds like we're making them in a laboratory somewhere. So the demographic seems to be opening up for the show. So as long as these things continue to be, then, uh, you know, chances are we'll continue to go, we'll con just continue to go on. Diana's writing 10 books in total, I think, for Outlander. Um, so I would love to tell the whole story, but who knows? There's no, there's no official word past season six at the moment. So um, when I know, you'll know, probably. What else have we got? Have you read the books? I've read those books. Um, I've read uh, I've read the books up to the Fiery Cross, um, and I normally start reading. Well, actually, I read the first four books in quite quick succession because when I was preparing for the part, I found them really useful. Um, so I, I got a lot of my research and, and basis for the character from the books, or certainly an idea from of the character from the books. Um, but uh, my kind of idea is now I'll, I'll now kind of read uh, the book prior to the season we're about to film. So I'll read I'll read uh, book six just before we start filming season six. Uh, let's see what else. Oh my God. Three favorite foods getting you through lockdown. <laughs> That's quite an interesting question. Um, uh, I've been making a lot of eggs, a lot of eggs, an obscene 
amount of eggs. I've been trying to go to the shops, to the supermarket, as little as possible, obviously, because, you know, there's, there's less risk in that. Um, so it's been more like, it's been almost every two weeks, you know, st it starts to be, I start to be eating, you know, the scraps by the end of uh, that period. But I'm trying to make it every uh, two weeks or as close to that as I can. And uh, one of the last trips that I made, I had bought something like 40 eggs, I think. And I had eaten them all within about 10 days, less than that. So I was averaging something like four eggs a day, which is ridiculous. That's absolutely obscene. Um, I like a good steak. I've been eating a lot of, uh, a lot of, actually I've been eating a lot of meat too much probably. A lot of chicken, a lot of steak, a lot of fish. Probably more chocolate than I should have been eating or would normally, but that's okay. I've been doing a lot of exercise to compensate. Um, will you be will you be directing any upcoming ep? And I'll start that again. Will you be directing any upcoming episodes? Um, well, there's certainly nothing in the pipeline for that at the moment, but I would love to. But that's a question that we we're getting asked. We are being asked quite a lot as a cast. Would we like to direct? Um, I would love to direct. I would absolutely love to direct. Um, it's something that I have an interest in anyway. I have an interest in directing and cinematography. Um, but I think we might have a little bit of a, you know, a line, a little bit of a cue, um, because I believe Katrina is quite uh, passionate, quite interested in directing, and I don't think there's anyone more qualified at the moment to direct an episode of Outlander um, than Katrina. So I would certainly love to work with her in that capacity and um, maybe do some, if I ever have the opportunity to follow down the line, that would be great. I would love to. Let's see what else. Who was your favourite person to work with? Um, I don't have a favourite. I love them all equally. That's not true, but that's the answer you're going to get. Um, let's see. Will you marry me? I mean, let me get a divorce first. Uh, Cindy, yes, I will marry you. But yes, you should get a divorce first. That's, I think that's the law. Um, can you recommend a good gaming laptop? Now we're getting into a territory. <laughs> uh, I, could, I could recommend a good gaming laptop. I mean, Alienware are good laptops. I probably shouldn't be promoting our brands, not that we're necessarily a brand. Um, yeah, I would always either go for Alienware or Razer. There you go. There's two recommendations for you. The Razer Blade is quite a good laptop. Also, um, Dell seem to be doing some pretty good laptops now. Tell us about your heat sink, you magnificent nerd. <laughs> Are people enjoying the posts I made? Some people were not enjoying the posts that I made before the Instagram Live. Come on, it's Sunday. Live a little. The heat sink, the photo of the heat sink was, I was just trying to be funny. I know that often I fail at that, but um, the reason why I had I'd taken my laptop apart, God, this is such a boring story that I'm just about to tell thousands of people. Um, I had taken my laptop apart because it started overheating. Um, and several years ago when I got that laptop, I, I did what's called a thermal repaste where I took it apart, cleaned out all the thermal conductive material comp compound and redid it. And recently it's been overheating quite badly, so I took it apart to see what was going on in there. It is boring, says Stephen Cree. Well, you know what, Stephen? If you have a more interesting story, you go right ahead. But yes, so um, it was overheating. And I wanted to find what the cause of this was. Was there some sort of um, chemical reaction? Was there some sort of oxidisation in the copper of the heat sink? Turns out there was a bit of a reaction to the thermal compound. So anyway, I cleaned all that up, ordered some stuff, and I'm going to fix it. It's a bit of a project. So there you go. Hope you enjoyed that. Um, God, I love it. Such a boring story. Uh, how can I sign up as an extra for Outlander? I have actually no idea. <laughs> I don't know. Um, do you like what? So I'm just scrolling through these questions to find and find a good one and ignoring all the ones I don't want to answer. 
did you always know you wanted to be an actor? No, no, I didn't actually. I didn't start acting until I was about 21 or 22. Strangely, would you believe, I wanted to be um, in some sort of IT field before that in computers, strangely enough. Who knew? How are you? Love question. I'm good. I'm really good. How are you? Um, you should film an episode. That's that. That is what I do. That is what we do. My favourite e my favourite episode this season. Uh, God, that's a hard one. The best, uh, I think the best episode in terms of performance was a 508, episode 8. The best performances were certainly um, within that episode. Um, yeah, that's it's a hard one to beat, that one. Um, especially Rick Rankin. I heard he was just outstanding. Not that I've even seen it. But honestly, next week, um, the last episode of the season is, is, is really, really, really strong. Um, just reading the script, actually, just the read-through for that episode was was uh, was exciting. And um, uh, I can't even say that much about it because there's too many spoilers in it. It's a great episode. It's the finale of season five. You're going to love it. Some of what I've seen and what I've been involved in and what I've read, it's incredible. Um, so that's my favourite episode um, and there's a lot of really great ensemble moments in there as well as some particularly special performances from key members of our cast but you're just going to have to tune in and decide for yourself whether or not you agree. Let's see, what else? Am I planning to work on any other projects soon? <laughs> yes, <laughs> Outlander, um, as, soon as, as soon as humanly possible. I think we are essentially going to and go once all the, the lockdowns and travel bans and um, restrictions have been lifted but, uh, but who knows, let's see, uh, how do you stay grounded as a person with a huge following and influence? Um, I don't actually, um, it inflates my ego enormously. I really think that I am the mutts nuts right now because of my following and uh, all the rest of it, um, it gives me a real problem when I go to the supermarket. I'm constantly looking at people as if, yeah, you do know me. Yeah, yeah, I am that guy. Yeah, no, sorry, I can't talk right now. I'm, uh, I'm busy. So, yeah, staying grounded is really difficult for me. Much like it is, for example, Stephen Cree, he's one of the worst people I've seen affected by his following and his influence. Um, yeah, he really, it really does go to his head, something special. Let's see, what else have we got? Uh, you should be the one behind the camera. I don't know whether or not to take that as a compliment. <laughs> like, you've really, you've been quite emphatic with the you should be the one behind the camera. Why? Because I'm not particularly appealing in front of the camera. No, thank you, I assume that. I'm, so I'm not advertising games by the way looks like i am um yes thank you I'll, I'll certainly give it a go one day i think uh well two people have asked the same question i oh, know it's the same person just asked it twice what do you like most about your character kiss from spain kiss from glasgow um what do i like most about rogers about roger um his integrity i think He's just a really, he's just a really, really good human being, um, and he will. Well, I mean, he he demonstrates that kind of time and time again. His, um, I don't know, his, his sort of yeah, his integrity and his, his 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 passion to do the right thing at all costs, you know, and it's usually at huge cost to himself. But he likes to be just, and he likes to see justice done, and um, yeah, I just think he's a really, really good human. Italy loves you, the whole country. Thank you, Italy. I appreciate that. Is that in the is that in a recent consensus? How's quarantine? I don't know. I could ask all you guys the same. How's quarantine for you guys? How's quarantine for all four thousand of you? Um, it's all right. It's um. I mean, I'm. People keep saying we're all in the same boat, but 
are we all in the same boat? I mean, everyone's having a different experience of it, aren't they? Um, it's, I don't know, I, I've got myself into a, a routine of doing, um, I've been tra trying to be productive, trying to keep my exercise up. I've got things that I do throughout the week. So I like to get my guitar practice in. I like to do a little bit of uh, Photoshop. So I'm learning new things on Photoshop and Lightroom on an online course, which is great. Um, I'm also doing exercise on a daily basis. I'm either running or training um, during the day. And uh, that's about it. I'm learning about learning, practicing my French, which is basic to say the least. And <clears throat> just keeping occupied and time seems to fly when you're doing that. Um, and obviously playing games here and there too and catching up with box sets that I haven't seen. So I feel like I've got plenty to do. Um, but I hope all you guys are coping well with the uh, the quarantine and um, hopefully it's not too you know heavy an experience for everyone. Obviously you've got Outlander to help you get to help get uh, through the quarantine, but we've only got that for another week, so you're gonna have to go back and watch it from season one. Um, let's see what else we've got. <laughs> Brilliant question. Were you to die in the series, would you like to come back as a zombie? Absolutely. Yeah, I think, actually, I think they should write that. I think they should write Roger the zombie who dies in season six and comes back as... Would, would people welcome him in as the zombie or does he just terrorise them as the zombie? Um, I think that's a great idea. That's certainly a twist that no one would be expecting. Were you a monk in The Last Kingdom? Yes, I was. I loved that character. That was a lot of fun, actually. Um, who's the funniest one on set? Um, me, obviously. That's not true. Probably Lauren Lyle. She's she she's a bit she's a bit funny. Talk about hanging. What do you mean talk about hanging? Just as a general topic of conversation or relating, particularly to uh, to Roger. Um, all the hanging stuff was was um, it was interesting. That was an interesting episode to play. Um, you know, there was a lot of research went into in terms of. A lot of research, a lot of conversation went into how we were going to do the, you know, the damaged voice and the, the damaged vocal cords and how long, how long were we going to keep that and how we were going to phase it out, which we, we kind of are. Um, and we came to the decision that that was going to be more of a, a, a psychological thing for Roger than, a, than an actual physical thing, because Claire says in the episode that he had healed from that. Um, after maybe about two months or so that everything should be working as normally. So actually it was just a week because he hadn't been using, using it, which I think was a much more interesting approach to, or certainly an interesting approach for me as an actor, the fact that the reason he couldn't talk and wasn't talking was all in his head. It was all a psychological thing and a lot of it was to do with his, with his PTSD and the trauma that he'd been through. So um, it, was, it, was, it was interesting. A lot of it was very, very dark. Um, Obviously, but I mean, in seeing any of the playback, I don't normally watch playback because, but because it was so stylized, Stephen Wolfenden, who you know, great director, so, um, you know, a lot of kudos to him for the episode, would show me some of the footage of the the black and white stuff, the silent movie stuff. I had always been, I was always absolutely all for that, but at the same time, thinking, God, it feels like it's a bit bold. It feels like it's a bit of a risk, but was always was always on board with it um, and I remember him showing me some of that footage and thinking god this really works it's really dark it's really unsettling and the whole purpose of it I think was to kind of take you on that was to unsettle and, and make the, the audience feel sort of um, awkward and kind of anxious about it all and I think they uh, I think they really achieved that um, I loved the way they, I loved the way they approached the, the, the hanging stuff. I thought it was very clever. My favourite time of the year. My favourite. My favourite time of the year changes <laughs> quite a lot. I think it's. I think it depends on where I am. Um. I. Uh, I used to love winter. Autumn going into winter. I think that comes from my childhood because I would hang. I would stay out quite late with all of my friends. In the winter, and we would 
jump people's gardens. It was called jumping the gardens and literally all it involved was you start at one person's garden and you just vault fences all the way up a street. And there would be varying degrees of difficulty to that. So there would be little courses that we would set. We would try not to get caught jumping people's gardens, obviously. So that's why we did it in the dark. And if we ever did get caught, we would say that we were looking for a ball or something. Like five of us looking for a ball at the back of someone's garden. No one ever believed us. Often the police were involved, but that's a, that's a tale for another time. What else are we? There's no Dean Roger, by the way, guys, just saying. Just, uh, Roger asked me to tell you that there's no D in his name. Is your hair that long because you play Roger? No, my hair is this long because I'm in quarantine. My hair is this long because I'm eating a lot of protein. Um, no, I'm tr actually trying to grow it for season six. Um, and I've been given a hell of a lot extra time to do it. So um, the idea is that when I go back to filming, I won't have to wear a wig. That's the theory. But we'll see. We'll see if that ever actually, if that ever works out. Um, the experience of recreating the post-trauma of Roger. Well, I think I kind of touched on that. Um, it was hard. I remember reading the script and thinking, I have no idea how I'm going to do this. I have, I, I, when I read the script, thinking, shit, I literally say nothing. Well, not literally, almost nothing for the entire episode, but he is kind of the, the, the protagonist through the episode, which I thought, how the hell am I going to do that? Um, because there was, a, there was a danger of him feeling quite sulky, quite, you know, uh, self-pitying and I suppose to a certain extent it might have been but we wanted to see his his desire to to overcome this we wanted to, to feel his not only feel his pain but feel his situation and feel that he wanted to he really wanted to do something to to get through it um, but he just kept coming against stumbling blocks and hurdles that he just couldn't get past and that thing about uh, well, his PTSD in particular, but he just he couldn't get past certain moments in his mind and his experience and the, the trauma that had affected him. He just he couldn't get past it. Um, so well, I was a bit anxious at first because I thought, can I, can I, can I, can I do this? Just it's literally going to be in body language and pretty much strange facial expressions, which you know I'm I'm, I'm all right at strange facial expressions. So it turns out, yeah, you know, I muddled through. I muddled through. Um, Let's see. Have you read book six already? I haven't. Um, I haven't read book six, not yet. I'm drinking coffee at the moment. In front of the camera, I'm drinking coffee. Behind the camera, I'm drinking beer. But don't tell anyone. Favourite meal, God, that changes on a daily basis. Um, if I could only eat one thing for the rest of my life, it would probably be burritos. No joke. Love burritos. What else have we got here? Good questions. Thanks, guys. Cutest moment with the twins who play Jamie. <laughs> I just felt like I was always getting into trouble from those boys. Like, really, a lot. Matthew, in particular, one of the twins who plays uh, Jamie. Um, there was the scene where... Roger shouts at Jemmy because he's just about to touch the boiling pot, but he hasn't spoken, so his voice is really hoarse. That's a lot of effort for him to do it, and the noise that he makes is, 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 is a really horrible noise, frightening noise for Jemmy, especially because Jemmy hasn't heard him talk um, for a couple of months. He's probably wondering what's going on with his dad anyway, and he shouts stop in this really hoarse, horrible voice. And he always did get genuine fright from it, and he always did genuinely cry out of fright from it. So after every take, I would say, I'm so sorry, listen, you know, it's all pretend, and I, please, you know, we're friends, aren't we? We're friends, high five, and, you know, just try and <laughs> try and show him that I love him. Um, and every take, it'd be, it was like he was being betrayed, because I'd regain his trust, and he'd be like, okay, well, don't you ever do that again. Don't ever do that again. And I'd be like... I can't promise that I'm never going to do it again because I'm literally just about to do it again. So I'd say, oh, listen, wee man, 
you know, it's just pretend we've only got, we only have to do it once or twice. I promise I won't scare you. And he's like, well, you promise you won't scare me this time? And I'm like, yeah, I won't scare you this time. And then we go to do a take. <laughs> trying to do a scene, but also think, oh, I don't want to scare the shit out of this boy again and betray his trust again. But then we did it and I got exactly the same thing. And he just, the look that he gave me was just one of absolute betrayal and, and, and mistrust. I don't, I don't know. I think he's probably scarred for life by me. So I did that. <laughs> uh, what else have we got? Tips for visiting Scotland. Bring a jacket. Favourite cocktail and beer. Uh, I love a margarita. I love a spicy margarita. I drink far too many of them. But that's my favourite cocktail. And I don't even know where that came from. I don't think. Um, I used to love a gin and tonic. Now it's margarita. I just realised how much sugar is in some spicy margaritas. It's, it's a lot of sugar. A lot of sugar. Um, which would be your fave Shakespearean role to perform? <laughs> what an actor's question. Um... I support. I love Iago and Othello. Uh, I'm pretty sure that Bill wrote that for me. Um, I just haven't had a chance to play it yet, so I'm going to say Iago. Um, please explain to everyone how everything's shot in Scotland. Explain to everyone how everything's shot. Where would you like me to begin with that? Um, I don't really know how to answer that question. Have you ever been to South America? No, that was funny. I was saying this to someone not so long ago. South America is the one continent I think that I haven't been to, with the exception of Antarctica and the Arctic, if you want to consider them about Antarctica. But South America I've never been to. Would love to visit. Would love to. Um, do you write songs? I've tried, I've dabbled. I don't know how good a songwriter I am, to be honest. Um, but I, I give it a go every now and again. I usually get about a verse and a chorus. I think, this is great, this is really good. I, could, I, can, I can hear myself on the radio right now. I can see myself on telly singing this. And then I slowly start to realise how shit it is and then I give up. And I don't quite know how to get into the bridge. I'm like, I know there should be a bridge. Because there's a chasm. I can't, there should be a bridge. I don't know how to write it, so it's usually about then that I give up. Um, who have you been keeping in touch mostly during quarantine? In terms of cast, I think all the cast are taking a break from me, to be honest. Except Stephen, I'm in touch with Stephen Cree quite a lot. Um, mostly because he just texts me out of the blue and phones me in the middle of the night and sends me really strange video messages um, from his bed. Um, you know, some of them are all right. Some of them are okay. Uh, what else do we have? Well, that's not a question. That's just an exclamation. Roger, any news of season seven? Let's get season six out of the way first, shall we? Um, can you speak another language? I'm practicing French. I used to be okay at French and it's kind of gone out the window a little bit. So I'm, I sh I'm, I'm making, taking steps to improve my French. Uh, certainly still got a bit of, bit of a way to go. Um, a musical episode of Outlander. Do you know, I don't think that's the worst idea. I think that's all right. Do you know, just as a wee bonus episode or something. Not that we don't have enough to film already, but a wee musical version of Outlander, just or even, you know, kind of a parody of ourselves, that would be brilliant. Or maybe an episode where we all switch characters or something. But I'm, I'm going to pitch that. Musical episode, everyone is exclaiming Tim, is, is, is Tim in here? So many, so many people talking, I can't quite keep track. Everyone else seems to do that much better than I do. Keeping an eye on all this chat at the, at the bottom. Is, is Tim down here asking about my conditioner? Well, you know, it's just, it's just natural. It's just natural oils that I'll let soak into my hair. Basically, I just don't wash my hair. If you don't wash it, it gets shiny. And whenever you're cooking, if you're using olive oil, for example, don't wash it off, just run it through your hair. Wax is a great conditioner. I'm joking. I'm joking. I use, I think it's Aussie conditioner at the moment. 
Um, but thanks for asking, Tim. Thank you. Thank you. It's nice to see you also, or not see you, but know that you're present. Um, let's see. Apparently I'm supposed to do this for 20 minutes. Okay, so when's 20 minutes up? 15 minutes ago? Okay, well, let's do it. Since you're all so nice. Burritos. <laughs> Say burritos again, someone's saying. I don't speak Gaelic, unfortunately. Um, something that I, I should really get into, um, you know, as a Scot. Um, and also to, 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 to support such a beautiful language, which is um, struggling to remain. Uh, there's a lot of places kind of the highlands and around Scotland that still speak to teach Gaelic at school but it's 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 not uh, commonly taught um, and well I think most of the country especially the central belt anyway the central belt like uh, Glasgow Edinburgh well, they don't they don't teach uh, Gaelic as a matter of course which I think I think they should um, at my school we had the option to study French German and Spanish and there wasn't an option to study Gaelic. And I don't think that's right. I think that's a bit shit. Um, what actor do you admire? What actors from Outlander do we have in here? Tim Downey, obviously. Actually, that's true. I really, I really do. Um, let's see what else have we got. Ever been to Holland? Yes, I have been to Holland. Lovely country. Not Romeo. Uh, yeah, love to play Romeo. But, you know, let's... Let's be realistic. I'm too old for Romeo, unfortunately. How many languages can you speak? I speak seven languages. Um, actually, no, that's not true. I only speak three and a half. I speak English, French, and shite. Let's see what else we've got. Will you do my fo more, more photography tutorials? <laughs> sure. I mean, yeah, maybe, maybe. I don't know. Uh, I don't know how well the, the tutorials actually went. I don't know what I was really thinking. If if, if people got genuinely um, valuable information from that, if it even inspired people to go out and take a few photos, or if it made any difference to anyone's photography on any level, then maybe. Um, but you know, <laughs> I came to the realization that there's plenty of YouTube videos <laughs> and tutorials, and they're all better than I am. Um, but yeah, maybe, maybe, I don't know. I have nothing but time. That is absolutely true. Uh, could you sing Clementine? I could. Will I sing Clementine? Yes. As soon as I come off this, I'm going to go and sing it in the lounge on my guitar. You want to braid my hair? Yes, you may. Come along and braid that hair right now. I'm not doing anything else. Uh, best place to stargaze in Scotland. Um, there's a place in, well, you, obviously because of light pollution, you have to be out of the city. I'm sure you know that. Um, but there's a place called Dumfries and Galloway. And there's a national park there. Actually, it's, it, it, is a, it is a, what is it they call it? A star park or a dark sky park that you can go to. Um, and uh, the stars are incredible there. But I also remember going to uh, a place just outside St Andrews, which is on the east coast of Scotland. And the countryside around there seems to be particularly dark. Out with somewhere like a dark sky park, it seems to be really, really dark. And at night it's beautiful, it's absolutely stunning. Um, you can see the Milky Way and you can see everything that there is in the night sky to see. So. Uh, um, yeah, somewhere around there, but I mean, just generally out in the countryside in Scotland, if you, you know, you go a decent, a decent way into the countryside, you should find yourself in a place dark enough, especially in the winter, um, to see a whole bunch of stars. Uh, what else have we? Favourite city? That's such a hard question. Other than Glasgow, obviously. Um, love San Francisco. It's one of my favourite places in the world. Love Seattle. It's funny, these places are on the West Coast. Um, New York, I fell in love with New York almost instantly. Um, Bristol is probably my next favourite place in the UK. Um, what else? That's, that's enough for now. 
what did I think of Outlander before I got on the show? I, I mean, I, I didn't know too much about Outlander before I was on it, um, before I started auditioning for it, which actually was quite early in the process. So, I mean, it was quite new here, but it sort of came in with a bang in Scotland because everyone knew about it. Um, it kind of became the job to have in Scotland. Everyone was kind of talking about it, you know, asking, have you been seen for Outlander? You know, got a role in Outlander. Um, and it just created a lot of buzz up here. And um, it really, really did a lot for, for film and television, I think, in Scotland. Um, it certainly generated a heck of a lot of work for our crew here, which is great. Um, and has, yeah, just, just, just kind of helped to put Scotland on the map, I think, television-wise, and as a place that is just great to to, um, to produce film and television. Uh, right, I think I'm running over my 20 minutes by quite a bit. Uh, let's see, one more question or two. Have I had Sam's Sassanac Cat 7 CS says, and what do I think? Cat 7 CS, are you actually Sam? Is that an alias and you want me to plug your whiskey? Is that what's going on here? Because you've asked it six times, seven times, eight times, ten, twelve. Wow, wow, wow. You've asked that question 21 times. 21 times. Are you genuinely a fan that's curious about Sam's whiskey or are you Sam Incognito? I'm going to say it's Sam Incognito. Sassanac whiskey is very nice. Sam gave me a bottle of it at the premiere, um, and it was uh, it was very nice indeed. It's a very good whiskey. So if you can get your hands on it, go for it. It's lovely. You are useless. That's not a question. Was that was that directed at me? You're useless. What are you doing in here? Um, Overwatch character. <laughs> Yes, I play Tracer on Overwatch. Well, actually, I play a few characters, but she's my main character. Right, everyone. Well, it's we are over time. I think Outlander want their um, account back so that they can delete the posts that I made and all the direct messages that I sent to the rest of the cast telling them how shit they were. Um, they might not do that. They might agree with me. But um, I hope you enjoy the rest of the night. I hope... For those of you who haven't seen it, or for those of you who have and are watching it again, you enjoy episode 511 tonight. It's a great episode. It was written by Diana, which uh, obviously she knows a thing or two about Outlander. And the season 5 finale next weekend, um, which is going to be great. It's going to be sad at the same time, but it's going to be great. And, you know, don't worry, we'll be here through Outlander. Don't you worry about it. We'll help you. We'll help you. Okay. Thanks for tuning in and uh, stay safe and have a lovely night, whatever you're doing and wherever you are in the world. Hey, how do I hang this up? How do I hang this thing up? What do I do? Hey, there's no one here joking. Press end. Goodbye.